Hello, this is Pastor Mike Creekmore, pastor at Bimini Baptist Church in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Uh, good to see you uh, today. Uh, we're going to be studying in the book of Daniel, uh, the book of Daniel chapter 3. Uh, we're going to look at three verses there in Daniel chapter 3. And I'm going to be talking today about facing life's furnaces uh, we certainly face uh, the fiery furnace every single day of our life. Uh, something comes along and our faith in God will make all the difference in the world. And so tonight, uh, I'm going to pray. Um, I'm going to dive into the text and we're going to explore what uh, Daniel has to say about facing fiery furnaces. Let's first pray tonight, and then I'm going to read the text, and we'll dive right into our study tonight. Let's pray. Dear Father, we do thank you for all that you do for us. And dear Father, tonight as we study Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, what a powerful uh, chapter this is in God's Word. And Lord, I pray that you'll teach us tonight and encourage us tonight as we face those fiery furnaces along the pathway of life. Lord, help us to know how to respond and how to get through it and how to face all those tough and difficult times. Lord, uh, speak to us tonight. Get me out of the way and may Jesus be high lifted in all that's said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, Daniel chapter 3, beginning with verse, first I'm going to read verse 28, and then I'm going to backtrack to verses 16 and 17. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Shach, and Abednego. He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serve and worship any god except their own God. And then in verses 16, 17, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need you to give an answer to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. Gladys Allward was a missionary who served the people of China for many years. Gladys had a life-changing experience at the age of 28, and she surrendered her life to Christ and began to live out her passion. She believed that God was calling her to be a missionary and calling her to the mission field. And she responded by choosing to go to China and to serve God. She ended up in a place called Yen Chain, where she met another missionary who was running an inn for travelers. It provided more than just lodging and hospitality. It was the mission ground for witnessing. All who lodged were exposed to the Christian witness of Gladys and that missionary. Gladys later transformed that inn into an orphanage for children. There were so many Chinese children who were orphans in that area, either from abandonment or running away from places where they were being enslaved or abused. However, the Japanese were invading certain areas of China, and the village where she uh, had this orphanage uh, would also be invaded. Gladys loved uh, these children, and now she has over 100 children of various ages within this orphanage. She knew that she had to leave with the Japanese soldiers advancing, but she could not leave behind these 100 children. So with only one adult assistant, she took those 100 children bound for a section of China that they would be safe and not impacted. For 12 straight days, she uh, made her way uh, through the terrain, 
to their destination. Food was sparse and they ran out. Some children were sick. Many were afraid. And she was not well herself and found herself afraid. Though uh, through the night and through the chilly days, she kept pursuing the path. Food pretty much gone. No medicine for children. Many cold. And it was just a terrible time in their lives. And then they came to the greatest obstacle, a river, a deep river, and that river had to be crossed. But then Gladys was worn out, and Gladys was frustrated. She had an emotional meltdown. What she knew, and perhaps would happen if they crossed the river, just overwhelmed her and brought her to a point of uh, just utter exhaustion. The older kids that she had taught to believe and love God told a story to the younger ones about Moses and the Red Sea. Those older children rehearsed what had been rehearsed to them by her, and they prayed for those little ones. Gladys ultimately wept bitterly and outwardly when she heard them tell the story that she had told them. And when she watched them pray over those little children uh, that uh, she had prayed over for years, and when she realized that that river was just uh, maybe, possibly, the end, she lost it emotionally. She said to the older children that was telling the story of Moses and praying, Here's what she said, but I am not Moses. I do not have what Moses had. One of the star pupils walked over and said, no, you're not Moses, Gladys, but he is the same Jehovah God that delivered them and can deliver us. In that book that was written about her, the author said that the next day a man with an empty ship came by the very place where they were camping and carried them across. You see, my friend, what I'm trying to say tonight through that little story is that God has a way of getting us through. God has a way of getting us over. God has a way of getting us across wherever he needs to. That is the essence of, of what Daniel was saying in Daniel chapter 3. God will give us faith that will equal our furnaces. Matter of fact, they will be larger than our furnaces. Your furnaces are never greater than the God of your faith. Let me tell you, and let me say it several times tonight in this study, God is greater than whatever you're going through. God is mightier than whatever you're facing. God is much larger than anything going on right now in your life. We all have furnaces that we face. Sometimes we find ourselves in the furnaces because of our convictions or decisions or choices. Sometimes we find ourselves facing the flames of life because of our faith. Sometimes uh, we find ourselves in a confrontation because of our commitments. <clears throat> but God, let me say this, God is adequate to conquer those furnaces in our lives. We do not have to be a, a, a Moses. We do not have to be one of the Hebrew boys because it's not who we are that determines our victory, but it's whose we are that decides the victory. You see, it's up to God. You see, it is a God thing. You see, it's not up to me. It's not up to my mind. It's not up to my intellect. It's not up to what Mike Creekmore can do. As a matter of fact, if it were, we'd be in bad shape. If it were, we would fail. If it were, we wouldn't get across. But praise God. God is on the scene. God is in the house. God is on your life. And God is on my life. And God can. We learn from Daniel 3 um, that um, 
faith, our faith in God will get us through. That's what the story teaches us. And so let me give you a couple of things tonight. I'm going to give you several things tonight, but two main things tonight uh, for you to remember and reflect upon as you face life's furnaces. Number one, their trial did not destroy their trust. Their trial did not destroy their trust. Perhaps there are reasons that God, God's permissive will for allowing things to happen makes no sense to us. We may never understand his wisdom, but we cannot, uh, uh, and we may not really understand what he's up to, but we must trust that God always knows the, the plan and what's best in our lives. The trials and the testing of life can destroy you. Your faith and trust in God. Um, you see, that's the important thing. Mankind shows me, and I'll trust you. God says, trust me, and I'll show you. Mankind says, show me, and I'll trust you. God says, trust me, and I'll show you. And so as we trust God, he comes through and he shows us his mighty power in our lives. And so their trial did not destroy their trust. And that's in verse 28 in chapter 3. Let me give you uh, uh, a couple of things to understand when I say that. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Let me say that again. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. The Hebrew boys were not sure about their future, but they were sure about their faith. My friend, I don't know what my future is, but I do know who I trust with my future. Also, their faith was in the word of God. They are Hebrews and they are Jews and they had a commandment and they had, um, they, uh, and when they were required to bow to an image made of gold and to worship an idol, that was uh, what uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the kingdom had said to those Hebrew boys. They were bound by a word that said in the word of God that thou shalt have no other gods before me and not to worship another image. So the word of God dominated uh, their disposition. The word of God dominated their action not to bow. Uh, my friend, they understood that God's word would over um, uh, God's word would take precedence over man's word. And so their faith was in the word of God. Their faith was in the workings of God. Again, uh, as Jews, as Hebrews, as Hebrews, <clears throat> they had each year during the Passover to sit around a table and revisit the history of how God passed over Goshen on the eve of the Exodus from Egypt and slew the firstborn male of the Egyptian house, and not a son of the Hebrews was touched by the deaf angel. The rehearsal of how God had uh, instructed them to cover the doorpost, uh, they would have rehearsed each year by living in booths for seven days as a reminder how God kept the people living 40 years in huts and the clothes did not wear out and their shoes did not wear out. They recalled the story, stories of bread falling from above called manna. Sometimes just remembering what God has already done helps you to face the furnaces of life. My friend, God has been faithful. I can look back in my life. I can look back in my family's life. I can look back at the Creep more history, and I can see time and time again 
where God came through. You do not have to carry it alone. You're not alone. God's with you. God says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. God says, I will strengthen you. I will be a refuge. I will be a strength. I will be an ever-present help in our time and day of trouble. Oh, what a God we serve. And my friend, just thinking back and reflecting back on how God, time and time again, even when my back was against a wall, God has come through. And that helps me today. Uh, you see, I do not have to face my furnaces alone. You do not have to face your furnaces alone. The king said the only way that they survived the furnace was that they put their trust in God. The flames of life's furnace can frighten you. The heat can intimidate you. The presence of the situation can terrorize you, but uh, trust in God. Have courage in God. Courage means that you do not let fear stop you. Courage is not having the strength of going on. It is going on when you do not have the strength to carry it out. You see, God becomes our strength. You see, God becomes our refuge. God becomes that anchor in our life, which he always should be to begin with, that anchor that stabilizes us and keeps us firmly planted on the word of God, believing God, knowing that God will come through, understanding that God is consistently the same and never ceases to be God, and he's always God, and he never will not be God because God is God, and God sent his son Jesus to die as a payment for sin, for your sin, for my sin, and we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We've been redeemed. We've been set free by uh, our mere believing in Jesus Christ, and so we can have faith to continue, and uh, we should have that faith. And so the first thing that I wanted to bring across your attention uh, tonight is their, their trial did not destroy their trust. But I've got a, uh, a, a second thing that I want to share with you tonight, and that is their obedience to God meant more than the outcome. Their obedience meant more than the outcome. The Hebrew boys stood up not sure of the outcome. They didn't know what the outcome was going to be, listen how they answered. Uh, we are not careful uh, to answer thee, but you would not understand the answer anyway. Sometimes your defense of uh, your conduct about your faith will never be understood. It'll never be understood. They were not concerned so much about the outcome as they were about the demonstration of their obedience to God. They understood that the battle that they were fighting was not theirs, but they were only representatives in the battle. The battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is the Lord's. And boy, how we need to hear that in 2021, this very year, when all kinds of abuse and all kinds of uh, darts are being thrown at children of God, those that serve Jesus. Uh, we're in, certainly in the minority. Certainly, um, um, we're not looked fondly at in 2021. And so we need to understand the battle is the Lord. Stay faithful, stay true, stay on course, keep doing what you know is right, and God will bless you. Let me I'll give you a couple of things uh, in relation to the point that I just made. Their obedience meant more than their outcome. They knew that their lives were really in the hands of God. The king had changed what they spoke in, in, in Daniel 1.4. The king changed 
what they had read, uh, Daniel 1, 4 as well, uh, they now were in Babylonian uh, philosophy and way of living. The king changed their lifestyle in Daniel 1, 5. The king changed their names, but he could not change their heart and their obedience to God. God was going to stick out. Uh, uh, the, the, the little girl, remember that story, the little girl that wanted to know uh, and understand how big God was and if, if he was as big as they said, he's going to stick out of me. Well, folks, that's what I'm talking about tonight. You could give them new names if you want to. You can give them new books uh, or give them a new position, but they knew that uh, God had the final say so. God was in charge. And, and so they understood, though all this was changed, they were going to continue to worship the Lord God Almighty. Let me give you uh, a quick second thing underneath this point tonight. They believed that ultimately they would be with God. And boy, that's key. If we die in the furnace, if we die in the furnaces of life, let me say something. We'll be with God. If you know Jesus as your Savior. Either way we win. Uh, you know, Paul said, to die is gain. Uh, you know, if I stay here good and fine, if I don't stay here good and fine, but I'm going to win either way. I continue to be a witness on earth or I go to heaven and live with Jesus forever and forever and forever. They decided to trust in God. In spite of the price. Let me tell you something. If you trust God, if you worship God, you're going to pay a price. Especially in 2021 when Christianity is, is being ridiculed. Christianity is in the minority. Christianity. Uh, everything else can be tolerated except Christianity. Despite the consequences, they were going to trust in God. Let me tell you something tonight. I'm going to trust in God. How about you? No matter what my circumstances are, no matter what comes my way, no matter what I face, I'm going to trust God. I'm going to keep God first. I'm going to keep God at the front of my life. I trust in God, wherever that may be out on the land or the rolling sea. For come what may from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On mountain bleak or the stormy sea, though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. God sends what we need to get us through. God will get you through. God will help you. God helped the three Hebrew boys. They went to the fiery furnace. They were cast in the fiery furnace. When King Neb came back and viewed the next morning, he didn't see three, but he saw four, and the fourth was likened unto the Son of Man. Jesus was there to protect them. Not a hair was singed on their head. They didn't even smell like smoke. And you know how it is when you're around a smoke or a smoky area. It gets all in your clothes. It gets all over your skin, your body. And they came out of that furnace unfazed. Why? Because God protected them. They blessed God and ble God blessed them. They honored God and God honored them. 
They kept their eye on God and God protected them even in the fiery furnace. God will get us through wherever God sends us, whatever God does in our life. He sent a Moses to Egypt. He sent a Paul to the Gentiles. He sent a Christ to this world. He sent a David to Israel. He sent an Esther to the king. God's got a plan. God's got a wonderful plan. I shared a Sunday or two ago about Jeremiah 29, 11. One of my favorite verses of God's word, of course, most people know my life verse, is Jeremiah 33, 3, calling to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know nothing about. Boy, that's the God we serve. That's the God on the throne that we serve. He was on, he was on the throne uh, during the time of these Hebrew boys. But let me share something with you tonight. He hasn't left the throne. He is still on the throne. He is still in charge. And no matter where God sent you, no matter what God's doing in your life, no matter what God's plan is for your life, he will be all over you to protect your life wherever he sins. I want you to understand he supplies. He supplies your needs. He supplies my needs. He comes through in your life. He comes through in my life. He's never let you down. He'll never let me down. That's the kind of God we serve. And that's the God that we praise tonight. And that's the God that we lift tonight. And that's the God we pay a tribute tonight. I just want to worship him. I want to praise him. I want to exalt him. I want to lift Jesus tonight high and lofty and keep him in my life central. And I know when I bless him, he's going to bless me. I know when I honor him, he's going to honor me. I know when I keep my eye on him, he's going to direct my steps. He's going to order my steps. And so tonight, I'm taking a chill pill in 21. I'm chilling out right here in Kinston, North Carolina tonight. I'm chilling out. If Jesus comes back before Sunday, somebody else can pastor Bevin you. I won't be here. Amen. And that's why I'm so chilled out tonight. Because I know my destination. I know the source of my faith. I know who has taken my sin away, blotted my sin out, washed me as white as snow in the blood of the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And boy, I can't wait to get there and cry out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. What a holy God we serve. And so tonight, let's praise him. So tonight, let's be encouraged. The Hebrew boys, they didn't know the outcome, but um, they wasn't all that concerned about the outcome because they knew that God would deliver them. And the reason they do, well, really, uh, they were delivered either way. If they did came up out of that furnace, which they were, they were delivered. If they had burned up, they'd been delivered because they would have been in the arms of God, delivered. So they've been delivered either way, but they had trust. And God uses this story to let all of us know that he can come through and he does come through. And he is worthy of our worship. To God be the glory. Let me pray. I'm about preached out tonight. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, uh, I especially want to lift up Ed Carty, who had some eye surgery today to repair a detached uh, retina. I pray for him 
And uh, Lord, I pray that uh, he'll have a speedy recovery and that eyesight will be restored to that eye. Lord, uh, tonight I pray for our, our shut-ins and uh, all those at, at Bimenu that can't get out a whole lot. Uh, we have uh, several in nursing homes. We pray for them as well. And Lord, uh, we have many sick folks. My secretary, Muriel, uh, we pray um, for healing in, in her life. Uh, our, my pianist, uh, Ms. Alice, we pray for healing in her life. And Lord, uh, we look forward to Sunday. Uh, uh, Braylon, as, uh, as uh, she is baptized, to God be the glory, Sunday, as we uh, dedicate a brand new pulpit that will have thousands of sermons preached uh, 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 behind it, uh, thousands of sermons in the future, and we'll dedicate that pulpit this Sunday. Lord, uh, bless that time. And Lord, we love you, we praise you, we exalt Jesus, and Lord, thank you for encouraging us tonight uh, with these three Hebrew boys that trusted God in spite of everything. They trusted God. Help us tonight to trust God regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what's going on. Help us to trust God. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in uh, tonight. And uh, we'll be back next week, uh, next Wednesday. Also, our Sunday services are on Facebook as well. Hope you can uh, watch some of those as well. God bless you. Love you. Praying for you. And as always, if you have a prayer request, you can send it to me. And you can count on it. We'll be praying uh, for that prayer request. As a matter of fact, tomorrow, 6 p.m., we begin 24 hours of consecutive prayer uh, at Bimini. We'll pray from 6 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, to 6 p.m. on Friday. So 24 hours of prayer, and we got another 30 days of prayer emphasis coming up a little bit later in the month of June. God bless you. Have a great night.